question. What is disease? Disease is created by an interplay of forces that are caused by a spiritual force called the glyphoth. The glyphoth is spelled Q-L-I-P-P-O-T-H. The glyphoth is the <clears throat> opposite force of the force that causes health or wellness, and that's called the sephiroth. Sephiroth is S-E-P-H-I-R-O-T-H. -E the interplay of those forces creates what we call quinoa food, which means health, harmony, and prosperity. An imbalance. How y'all doing today? Y'all doing good. Y'all just got finished uh, turning up the heat a couple of degrees Celsius wise in the third quinoa food here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, how do you feel right now first? How do you feel? Anybody can start. How do you feel right now? You, 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 you thought this out, and now it's come to completion, at least this third phase. You're done. Are you exhausted because it was tiring? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm going to take care of that short. I'm going to take my shoes off. Okay. I'm going to relax. Okay, okay. It, okay. Got, it got so hot in here, the alarm went off. Yes, now. <laughs> Are you taking responsibility for that, Dr. Gibbs? At all. Go check it out. You sure that you're not having you have any input at all? Somebody just pulled me along. You've done a lot of things in your life, brother. This is a time where you could. I did not do that. Some people say you eye talk, so ladies, y'all just watch his eyes, man. That's all I'm going to say. Ladies and gentlemen, just watch his eyes. My name is Shelly Ingram and I'm from Holland, Arkansas. So this is my second quinoa food. The first one was in Pablo. Alright. <laughs> Shout out to Pablo Sweet Family. <laughs> and um, so coming into this one, I knew that I was gonna get uh, a great wealth of knowledge just from the experience in the first one. Um, I knew that there would be some going back over of the things that we learned, you know, in the initial quinoa food. And it was great because I found out that there were a lot of things I did wrong mm. initially. Okay. Or that I was not doing correctly or thoroughly enough. Right, right. And by attending this one, it was well worth the money spent because it, I'm, I'm going to go back and do it exactly, you know, the correct way. Right. And although I have had some um, minor successes with um, the practice that I've been doing, I believe that this is going to move me forward. And just the information that he gave today was outstanding. <laughs> the people here asked some excellent questions. I mean, I think that's the best thing that you get about going to the different ones, you know, as opposed to just going to one. Seminar. When you go to the different ones, you never know what he's going to give you. And then you never know based on the who's going to ask the question that's just the perfect question. Right. 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 Right.
ask him a question, then he's willing to answer, you know, the simplest question. And he, he proved that today, you know, he answered some of the same questions several times, but he still answered the question, right. you know. And um, and he showed us, you know, how to go through each step. He read each step, you know, thoroughly. So I think that, you know, if you paid attention to what he was teaching, and I know you get the, you know, you want to start thinking about well, what does this mean and, and how is this possible and all of that. But if you just kind of clear your mind and go with what he's giving you and try to accept that and then question it later, then it'll give you an easier understanding. So, no, I don't think anything was too difficult to be able to work out. Did you meet any new fun people today that you hadn't met before from around the world, around the country? Um, I didn't meet anybody from around the world at this one. Now okay. I did in Arkansas. Okay. But at this one, I met people from around the country. I made some friends. And okay. um, Dr. Gibson encouraged us to exchange numbers with someone that we did not know. Well, Miss Gibson encouraged us to exchange numbers and information with someone who, thank you, <laughs> who we did not have contact with to kind of watch us and, and guide us and give us a measure, measuring stick to how we were doing our practice and whether or not we were doing it the proper way. So I think that was a really good idea. And everybody was really open and receptive to exchanging information even before he said that. Right, right. I, I think people are always, you know, kind of open and loving to come to, to this. And, you know, we always make them friends. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. I drove about five hours from Modesto, California, and I've been studying with Dr. Gibson for about ten years. So I was I'm kind of associated with the original Arizona group. Mm. Um, my my best friend from junior high is one of the original um, uh, students of Dr. Gibson. So I've um, been enamored with the whole family for a long time. Um, this is my first. This is my. I went to a lot of. I've even been to Charlotte for the spiritual fire workshop. I've been to Words of Power healing. I've been to a lot of his workshops. This one. It's gonna work. <laughs> Are you saying the other ones didn't work? Or? They all work. Okay. This one, and I'm doing attunements right now. But this one is. Um, I'm getting goosebumps from this one. Wow. This one has a lot of practical application you can use right away. I really feel this is from the angels, that, and I feel that we're blessed to have Dr. Gibson. And I feel like really special that I'm learning this information because that's my life goal is to learn secret ancient information. I love it, and it's right my alley. And I'm like kind of blown away, but I'm really excited, and I know this is going to be like really, really powerful for myself, but to help other people. Um, the practicality. You said that you got a lot of practical tools today. Are you ready to go practice immediately, or are you going to wait two or three Waiting. weeks? No, starting Sunday, the full moon, moon of the Guru, and I'm starting right away. Um, I love the stuff. I like all those angels. I have studied those angels before. I have a book of all those angels. I recognize all those angels' names. So I've had that information since I was in college mm. for a reason. And I, I also scan um, some of the, um, the 72 words of God, so I know I'm familiar with those. So a lot of it is like bits and pieces that are now coming together that I've learned through my lifetime that I know that this is meant to be and I'm supposed to be here and it's going to be, um, I'm going to see a lot of this stuff happening really soon. Nice. Anything else you want to add yourself? Just, um, I want to know Kathy. Kathy sees this. I want some of your beauty secrets. <laughs> I have seen you over the last 10 years grow, and Dr. Gibson too, more handsome, but Kathy, you're looking really good. And so we need to share with us that are getting up there how you're looking younger and younger. So I hope you let us in on some of that too, because she looks kind of like, you look like a goddess. And you see this, and you really look good. Yes, well, thank you very much. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to see what is going to my my future holds. Um, this is my first workshop. I've basically been uh, following Mr. Gibson and his wife Kathy for I guess almost five years now, kind of off and on. But my intention when I came here was kind of to get a, a taste, like an actual hands-on experience, like.
where I can actually interact with people, as well as uh, get a more detailed, um, practical, step-by-step, -step, you know, how to actually use these magic practices. And they did that quite excellently, and I feel like I'm confident and ready to, uh, to put in the work and you know, get in what I put in. How far did you travel to get here? I came here from uh, Canada. Yeah. What part of Canada? Uh, right from BC. Okay, okay. Yeah. And um, did you pick up some jewels or tools that you can use immediately, or do you think this is gonna you're gonna have to put this on the back burner and start later on? Uh, I think this is because basically I have been following them, like I said earlier, so I probably will just immediately get off the ground and start going. The situation was the consistency. You know, I think that's the one thing that people don't understand within these magical practices that you need to do it all the time. And basically, what he kind of the issue for me was consistency, and what he kind of pointed today at was you have to do it every day. You know, you have to make that intention every single day. And it's almost common sense that if I focus my attention on something every day, I'm bound to interact with it and experience it and actually eventually have it. So do you think you could have found this anywhere else in the world? Did it seem unique to you today? <laughs> I don't think I could have found this anywhere else in the world. Um, this is the only place. I, I've looked everywhere. You know, I looked literally everywhere. I've been, I'm, I'm an avid researcher. Um, I study a lot. Like what Mr. Gibson said, it's important to study. It's important to focus your energy on uh, trying to uplift yourself, and you will receive the benefits of that. And I have personally, so that's what kind of continues my my uh, desire to propel myself forward. But interesting enough, with his information, I just don't know where I'm going to go from here because I think a lot of things are going to I'm going to create benefits. Um, you don't seem like spooky looking. A lot of people make magic like it's spooky and scary. Like you don't have a face full of tats. You don't have on a pentagram. You know, um, what do you have to say about people who think magic is spooky? Did you see anything spooky about what was going on today? There was nothing spooky about <laughs> anything. You know, there's no such thing. You know, all the stuff that people... The, I think the, the myth that we're told that it's like goblins and goblins and like everyone's dark and wearing cloaks and you know and everyone is kind of chanting in a corner you know that's not really what magic is about magic is light you know it's like bringing light into your life and if you aren't feeling more positive or happier more open then it's really you're not really I think practicing it anymore like you're supposed to use that into your life and I think from my experience it has like I've, I've increased through using the miracle prayer in my life, uh, through the use of Vijaya, through listening to other tones and other ancient scripts. It has helped me immensely. Um, I'll just give a small little story here, personal, personal experience. Well, I had a point in my life recently, or a while ago, where it was like I was disconnected from faith, and I felt at the point of my life that that's what I needed to do, but I didn't understand how. Um, dark of a position I was in. And kind of magic is what illuminated my life again and connected me to God or, you know, high consciousness or, or uh, the light or the creator, whatever you want to call that. I feel like I'm connected within that once again. I know that I've never, that connection was never severed, but consciously, you know, in my, in my heart, I feel I know that I'm connected with that again. So, yeah. I see you got a couple of uh, uh, CDs there, brother. Yeah. Uh, 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 out the store right now. Okay. I got a little bit of everything. Uh, I got a uh, goddess Fortuna, right. which is excellent for uh, getting your fortune and blessings. I have a uh, miracle prayer for breaking curses and moving dark focuses. Um, just getting rid of those negative energy, those blockages, uh, those people in your life that don't need to be in your life anymore. And I got a uh, magical enhancer. I think that's important just you know, to get my focus and clear my mind before I make my intentions. So yeah. I see you got that exclusive too that you can't buy, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, you just have to come to Kemwaku if you really want to get uh, 
what's good. Unfortunately, this is not going to be sold anywhere, but the camera are free, so you want to make sure that you actually come in and take part. So that's your copy? It's my copy. It's mine. And it's not for sale? Else. No. It's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Well, cool. we appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Big Brother. Is this your first Ken Wapu workshop? Yes, this is my first Ken Wapu workshop. Um, I was invited initially to go to the Pine Love one, but I couldn't make it. My schedule changed, and so it didn't happen. And then I showed up here today. And um, before you came, did you have any like ideas or anticipation? What were your feelings, or what were your what were you looking to get out of it before you got here? Okay, well, I just wasn't looking to get anything out of it, um, but I did have visions leading up to this point, and so I was aware that it was an initiatory process, mm. and I was aware that it was a safer process. And um, in my own process, um, like being able to uh, source, source, I was able to discern that today would be a welcoming day, and so I came prepared to be mostly receptive. Okay. And um, I have found that uh, Dr. Gibbs's work, uh, it allows for that kind of opening because of the clarity of consciousness and the pureness that he's already worked towards. So it makes it easier to resonate at that vibration when you're in a group of people who are vibrating at the same level of uh, frequency, mm -hmm. as well as um, each person bringing their own unique tone. So setting its own matrix tone is participating. So now you've finished the workshop. What are you, five minutes? We just finished. Five minutes in. Five and, minutes in. And, and now what are your post feelings after uh, seeing all of the tools that were presented today? Um, there was a lot of new information. <laughs> But there was a lot of things that I was already aware of, but it was being reconfirmed. Mm. So it was, um, for me, it was an integration of, okay, it's time to take this process and move forward. And I was already moving into um, another process that requires a year. So this just is right on time. Mm. Do you think it's complementary to what you were already doing, or do you think you have to change or shift what you were already doing? It's complementary. That's what made it such a great integration, and the timing is perfect. Ooh. The fact that it happened today within this process that is happening. So, like I said, I already knew it was, I knew I, I what I was coming to just be receptive. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to get, right. but I knew that I would get something that would allow me to continue to grow and expand in my own consciousness, to continue to share. Um, and most of how I see my work anyway is I'm doing the work for myself so that I'm a living like that so for those around me. And so I don't need to go out and heal anybody because healing comes from just being in my presence. Mm -hmm. I, will, now, I would right, like to add right, the thought right, right. of I really appreciate Dr. Gibson being so um, giving in his work. A lot of teachers don't give you details. Mm. Uh, a lot of teachers don't break it down to you. A lot of teachers don't support you in the practice. And one of the things that I do admire about him as a teacher is that he's willing to share his information reasonably without making it seem like um, a spiritual consumer market. Wow. And I appreciate that because if we, if we need anything, we need more people with this knowledge. We need more people practicing this knowledge. We need more people resonating at a higher vibration so that the universal and the lack of powers do start to shift so that we don't have as many people in poverty. We don't have as many feelings and things like that. So I'm excited about what he's doing and I'm willing to continue to support Thank you. Uh, this is my first quinoa food workshop. I'm from Philadelphia. Uh, before coming, um, I reserved, you know, I, I removed my need for judgment. I just came in with an open mind. Uh, not sure what, not, not sure what to expect. Um, I can tell you now that I need to run my energy. Um, I'm very filled up. Um, I think my head popped at least three times, four times. Um, they probably heard the sonic boom. Right, right, um, right, right. It, You know, it's just absolutely amazing uh, information. And, um, yeah, I, I think that it's just, it's something that requires you to 
to really take a few moments um, um, as you do the work on yourself and take it in and uh, really allow yourself and your soul and your subconscious uh, to open up and accept it so you can understand uh, that there's more to uh, life than what we see. It's more this camera, myself, or the gentleman here, and then you're really accessing, access, you know, really being given tools to access um, a higher consciousness um, from what I'm gaining. Um, for you to be able to um, take further steps towards your higher purpose. And so I'd like to say that this is magnificent and you'll see me in North Carolina. How did you feel um, about the applicable factor of what you learned today? Do you think you can take some of these tools and get started tomorrow? I'm taking all the tools and I'll be devouring them tonight. <laughs> and. Uh, the funny thing about yeah, I'm a rather aggressive you know, by nature I'm a rather aggressive guy. Okay, so okay. you've pretty much given me everything that I need to know for now. Um, and I think again, I think that just like like any other type of spiritual practice is something that you you immediately start working on. You know, you find out what you can work on now, do that, and then prepare to take the next steps. Now a lot of people say, well, um, they get bored with something that they just learned. Like a, like a kid, they get a toy and put it down. You think this new thing that you learned is anything that you're going to put down anytime soon? Uh, not at all. I mean, I think <laughs> that, you know, for, you know, there's no judgment there. Anymore. Everybody's on their own path and, you know, they, they, everyone, I think, um, accepts information in their own way. Um, when you're doing spiritual work, uh, meditation, intuitive work, Ken uh, Fu, uh, this is it's nothing, it's not for children. Yes. Um, yes. And so if you're engaging, your, if your inner child is engaging, that's something that you can take a look at <laughs> on your own right. before you jump into Ken Fu. Right. You right, know, because right, this is right. by all means something that uh, requires uh, uh, your full uh, participation. And what I mean by that, mind, body, spirit. Uh, and you know, and really allowing or accepting that you're engaging your higher consciousness as well as uh, the God, the Goddess, and all that does within you. Do you feel that everything within you was comfortable today? A lot of times, the environment may not be comfortable. How comfortable were you today? I was very comfortable. Okay. Um, you know, there's no coincidences, right? So I. Fortunately, um, me coming here today, I was ready for this information. Right. Um, would I have been ready for this information five years ago? The answer is absolutely not. You know, and uh, what was interesting was, um, yes, very comfortable towards the end, and, and like I feel right now, I just really need to run my energy. Yeah. Because I'm just filled up with so much right now. Um, so towards the end, I was like, you know, I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready to just meditate. We turn these lights off and just start chanting or something. I'm going <laughs> was, to my room real quick. Yeah, because somebody like poke me with a pin and lift with this energy out, yeah. <laughs> you know. But um, you know, so yeah, I, you know, I feel very comfortable, and you know, and I see that people have that questions to ask and all that, you know, and I, I get that. I, I think that I don't want to overcomplicate this. Ultimately, as sophisticated of a message as it is, as powerful as a message as it is, however you want to, whatever adjective you want to attach to right, that, right. it's actually very simple. Yes. You know, yes. and so the, the working on yourself means getting out of your own way. So I don't want to get in my way. I just kind of want to take which is very, what is very clearly laid out and put it to practice. So tonight, um, after I run my energy, <laughs> I'll put what I can to practice tonight and then, you know, by tomorrow, I'll probably have gotten like a, like 10, 10 years worth of can white candles. Absolutely. <laughs> 400 gallons of honey, and, and I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? People will come to my living room and be like, oh, Ron, why do you have crates of candles and honey? You know, like, don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's my plan. You know? Absolutely. Well, thank you, big brother. Well, man, thank you very much, and blessings to everybody. This is a wonderful practice. I just came to something which I feel that I'm very happy about it, and just for that, it is about the tools okay. I got which I'll use, but it's also about being in his physical presence and that just changes something. So I feel that change over a period of time. I've started to realize that you know some, something suddenly changes and you're a different person and I feel that. Is there anything else that you want to add? 
Yeah, I would just, uh, you know, thank you for taking this interview and, uh, you know, great being in this company because it's very rare. You go to workplace, shopping, you don't get this company. And this all adds to, you know, the quality of your life, the quality of your spiritual life. And I love that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Reverend Richard Bullard. I'm the pastor of Grace Evangelical Baptist Church in Palma, Arkansas. And no, this is not my first go round with Dr. Mitchell Gibson. I uh, started Dr. Gibson in 2009. No, no, uh, took many seminars, Word of Power, uh, Body of Light, uh, some uh, solar meditation work with him, and many other things, uh, clairvoyant medicine. And so uh, uh, this is uh, my third Ken Wapu. I was in Pine Club, obviously, and went to New York, and then here. Well, each one of them, I have perfected my practice. Woo! Of uh, Ken Wapu. Oh. And uh, man, I tell you, he keeps ratcheting it up each time. Were you ready for today's information? I thought I was. <laughs> based upon having attended, you know, the Ken Wapu in Arkansas and the Ken Wapu in uh, New York. Right. But, you know, without giving away any secrets, the new stuff he had today blew me away. I know it blew you away. Yes, yes. But um, it blew me away because um, that's really making our angel work more accessible. It's given us a tool to actually combat some of the, um, I guess, negativity that, and darkness that uh, people face each and every day. There are people, as a pastor of the church, not only do I want to be empowered to be able to uh, help them, but I want to be able to empower other people mm -hmm. and connecting them with the divine linkage of the, our realm, with the spiritual realm, <laughs> angels or gods or whatever is very important. That's, a, that's information that is uncommon and is definitely not taught or it has been stolen from uh, people who are seeking a spiritual experience. Or forgotten. Or who have forgotten. Absolutely. So do you think maybe some um, amnesia was broken today and maybe some, um, you know, some ahas jumped off? Did you feel any ahas in the room or did you have any ahas today? Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, you can't, <laughs> you can't be in the presence of Dr. Kemper and Ms. Kemper and not have an aha experience. Okay. I mean, just in casual talk. <laughs> I mean, he dropping jewels and golden nuggets, man, of, of thought transformation within your consciousness. Um, but yeah, but again, what I like most about this is to see people begin to realize that they can make a difference in their reality. That's the biggest thing. And to know that, you know, like the inner and outer gods, that all the gods that we focus on externally are also operating within us internally. And the key is to know how to link those two together. That is revolutionary. When you say something? The divine linkage. Powerful. Powerful. Um, revolutionary reality. He, he said that word today. What were, you, what were the thoughts going through your mind when you heard him say, you know, we're revolutionizing reality? What were you thinking when you heard that right there? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, that's what every spiritual tradition is really designed to do. Mm. Is to empower people to make them not just revolutionaries but but before you have to be, before you become a revolutionary you have to be an evolutionary right and that's what it's doing it's evolving right. Right. that's the key right when um, you evolve then you can revolve or change the world a lot of um a lot of teachers won't reveal this these type of teachings you know what i'm saying they've been kept hidden or some people have used them for their own personal uh um personal gains. What would you say about uh, a figure like the Gibson, Dr. Uh, Mitchell and Kathy Gibson, about sharing something like this? What do you think that says about their character as teachers? Well, it can be summed up in one word. Look, you can see the love between Dr. Mitchell Gibson and Kathy Gibson. And that love that they have to give each other, they transmute that to all of us. They, they actually own a ministry of love because like you said there are teachers who like to keep it for themselves you know who want to uh, own it for themselves they really want to reverse what we can call a curse ignorance like you said amnesia upon uh, people who are outside 
that knowledge base, that information. Mm-hmm. They're bringing it to the masses. Mm. That's it, why I'm here. That's what got me uh, five years ago. Right. That's what got me. Somebody who's willing to share. Somebody's willing to share and to help correct the miseducation. There's nothing more dangerous than spiritual miseducation. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing more dangerous than spiritual miseducation. Because, like Carter Woodson say, if you miseducate a person, you have to tell them where to go, where to sit. They'll, if there's no door, they'll find a door to go and be lost. Right. Spiritual miseducation is even more devious. Right. And there's been a lot of things that have been hidden, stolen, you know, from the masses. That would have that would have improved this world, evolved even further. Thank God, our gift has manifested himself in this reality because he is actually bringing that hidden truth back. And I would say that it's amazing that when you hear it, something something cuts on in your conscience, in your mind, and you realize it, and, and you realize this is the missing key. Yeah. And I don't want to say it on tape because of what he said today because you should have been here to, to hurt to him, hurt today. But he revealed to me today uh, that truly has been stolen. Yes. From the yes. And I'm just so happy to know that God counted me worthy to live this long and to get it and to be able to use it. Man, that brings tears to my eyes. Mm. To be honest with you, mm. that brings mm. tears to my eyes. I'm like a kid at Christmas right now. I'm like a kid at Christmas. Well, I'm going to let you go play with, uh, play play with, some, with some big boy toys. Not little toys, some big boy, big boy toys. toys. So thank you, man. I thank you so much. I appreciate much. you for appreciate it. serving you right now. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Los Angeles. I, um, Brother Kair, <laughs> told me about it. He just, you know, on a whim, called me to say he was going to be in L.A. and tell me what he was going to be doing. And so I thought, I should do that. <laughs> so I called and um, set an intention to get on the guest list. And they were sold out. And then they called a week later and said, we have space. And so I booked my, I booked my space. Um, before coming, I felt really called. Like I really wanted to learn the information and about magic, and I felt like it was something that was really going to be quite natural for me. Um, and so I started listening to all his videos on YouTube and paying, and practicing as much or learning as much or getting as much information as I could before I got here. And I would just listen to his um, prayers and listen to them before I went to sleep or just let myself be in meditation and listen to his prayers and just feel the energy of that and and just to get myself ready. Today I came and I really, I I didn't take many notes, there's a lot of information, so much information and I just kept hearing my heart say, just take take in the energy, don't do a lot of writing, just press record on your iPad and let it record and let it go and and trust that you're going to get what you need for you. And so that's what I did. And so right now I feel a little, I feel sort of for lack of a better word, high. Like I don't, I don't use drugs or anything like that. But I feel, um, I feel sort of out of body and um, and very open and receptive. I talked to as many people as I could while I was here, and I feel like this is, I feel like this is my home. I feel like this is my family. I feel like these people, the people here, will resonate with what I've always felt is natural to me all my life. And um, and one of the, the real gifts is like. Kair because we are Facebook friends and I would always feel like, oh my God, he's going to eat me alive on Facebook, but I always would just surrender. I was like, just be humble with this brother. Don't trip. Just be humble. And sure, and because I was, I stayed, I kept a receptive space open so that when he was coming here, he felt comfortable calling me and giving me this information, which is exactly what I need in my life right now. So I feel like that was all divine and a part of me just really humbling myself so that I could be receptive for what the universe wanted to offer. So I'm excited. Do you think some of the things that you learned today you can use immediately? Absolutely. I feel like I got it already. Like I felt like just watching like the stuff, the information that was given, just seeing it, just getting into my consciousness was was like it's already working. I do. Did it fill any gaps in for you? Yes. Totally feel gaps in for me. I totally feel 
like, like I feel like my power is up here, but I could only get this high, this high. And now I feel like I have the tools to get higher, and it just, it just makes sense. And he's so genuine. That's the thing. He's so genuine, so sincere, so um, kind. So much kindness emanates from him that you can. For me, that makes a difference. I mean, safety. In this okay. Kind of how do you feel about the, the the energy of the family that was here today? Um, in um, I don't want to say comparison, but in continuation of the first two uh, workshops. Well, I think the first thing I noticed is that the audience had a lot more um, questions than the previous audiences, and I think it's because the energy is much stronger. The things that he revealed today is a little bit stronger than it was in the prior two. And you've been it all three, yeah. so. I know you know uh, firsthand that there's a difference between each one that we, we present. And I think that they really love the, what we present as far as information. That these practices, and because they can see that they've been working for others, they're excited about it. They want to get started. And so I think their enthusiasm <laughs> made them have a lot more questions than the prior two groups that we presented. Are you reading my mind asking the question? Which one is she doing, Dr. Gibbs? I'm, 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 I'm thinking all of those things. And you? I'm really happy to see just a wide variety of people come together with all the, the racial tension. It's wonderful to see different races, different ages travel so far to learn together. Sports. You just don't see that. Right you see black, you see white, you see Hispanic, Asian, African, all in the same room, asking questions, learning, enjoying each other. That's family. Can you talk about the healing aspect? You just wrote a blog about uh, spiritual teachers and you know we just had the ruling on you know this particular case in Florida and uh, how do you feel that this factors in to uh, healing we need more of this we need more people coming together to learn empowerment to learn how to make themselves more involved to make themselves better people if you had enough people doing that Trayvon Martin cases wouldn't exist mm -hmm. they would go away um, uh, as a mother, uh, Ms. Gibson, how do you feel about the importance of these teachings trickling down to the children? So I mean, for them to get this type of information early, they're going to be such evolved adults that they can make a real change in the world. Because one person can affect thousands and maybe even millions of people. But if they're learning these techniques now, and they're applying them as they're growing and continuing to grow, just think of what they can do when they're 30, 40, 50 years old. They won't have time to think about the menial things that we spend our time and minds on. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing things that's going to help evolve the consciousness of humanity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important to teach them early. Mm, thank you. Um, Dr. Gibson, um, you came up, some would say poor. From a poor neighbor. Very poor. <laughs> okay. But the P is poor. R2. <laughs> Um, some people have said, oh man, it's all about the materials and what, you know, why is he celebrating somebody getting a Porsche? Or um, and some people say, well, I don't really know if I feel good about asking for money or feeling good about asking for uh, prosperity. I just want to be a god. Or I just want to be something, you know, imagine. I want to have magic, but I don't want to be rich. Um, can you, can you, well to me that may be a dysfunction because I feel that God wants us to live life and live it abundantly. Um, what are some of your thoughts on that particular thinking, where it comes from, and why you're coming at it and attacking it with these answers? Like that? Because I think when a person looks at reality that way, they don't really understand how poverty is a consciousness as well as a reality. And the consciousness of poverty makes us such that a person gives up hope. They give up wanting things that they see on television. They expect to go home. They expect the home not to be cold, not to be warm in the winter, and not to be cool in the summer. They expect their clothes not to look as nice as other kids. 
And so when you allow that sort of consciousness to seep into your bones, a person does everything they can to get away from that and not be part of it. A person saying that they don't need money doesn't understand that consciousness. They don't understand the hunger of a child or the hunger of an adult who wants to do more for this child than her children. And the reality of poverty is something that the entire world goes with. To say that we don't need money is the is a phrase that a fool would speak. Can you talk about the sicknesses that are that the soul is opened up to when you start to deprive yourself of things like that? What type of entities or diseases are um, scientifically can, can can try to possess a body or take over a spirit? A poor person is not going to live as long as a wealthy person. A poor person is not going to see the world the way a wealthy person will. A poor person is not going to get educated more, more than a wealthy person will. More, more, more so that causes a disease related to the feeling of inadequacy. A person that feels inadequate isn't going to present the same way to a job interview. And they might not get that job just because they don't feel like they deserve it. Either. There's also the diseases related to health and lack thereof. You don't live as long because you don't take medicine, you can't afford medicine. Mm. You're sick, you can't go to the hospital. You go to the hospital, you can only stay a short time because you're poor. And you can't afford more. Also, with a person's life that doesn't have life is dark. You don't expect life to be bright in the way that it should be because it's grown to be something that you just expect. You don't expect happiness in the same way. You don't expect joy. You expect at best contentment. Most of the time you expect to be able to get through a day. Wow, wow. Um, people often um, say that um, magic, which this workshop actually was about, practical magic, is spooky. And oh, we're summoning up demons. Uh, I didn't see any today. I didn't see any demons. I haven't seen any in the three that I was there. Um, but I've been, I've, I've attended. Um, how is it that you now are picking this light side um, to say, I'm going to present magic from the practical divine side um, to balance that out? Is that a part of your strategy? Most definitely. You want to have the world be introduced to practical magic that works, and we're having phenomenal results. And I make no apologies for that. No apologies. No apologies. Ms. Kathy? Well, I think because our mentality is that if we're doing magic, it has that connotation of something being dark. When, if you look back in history, magic was part of the Bible that was taken out. Mm. So there's divine in magic, and people just don't remember or they never knew that was part of the Bible. And I think if a religious person who's been in the church and that's their foundation, when they hear of a cult or magic, they automatically think something dark. When they don't know that in our background, in Christianity in this background, the magic was in the Bible and it was taken out so that they can control people so they wouldn't use that magic to better themselves. Now, you being from the church, you've heard some Christians say, well, some things God they don't want me to know. What do you say to those people? God's inside of us. And what we already know and things that we've forgotten God wants us to know what that is. So he wants us to remember. Absolutely. Mm, okay, last question. Uh, November or December, later on this year, some people are going to be invited to come to Charlotte. That's right. I need to hear something about it. Somebody tell me something. <laughs> it's an event that we're more appreciative to be able to offer to the people who've been very supportive to us over the years that we're going to offer 300 seats to the first 300 people who will actually on Monday, I will put it on the website, to get the higher level of Kenmore food that we're going to be teaching on November 30th at the Omni Hotel in Charlotte, North Carolina. So it's our gift to our supporters. It's a free event and we want them to come and share this time with us. It's like the kickoff to the holiday season. And as much as anything, it will be a celebration. We will have the year long, the year end psychic challenge uh, competition where we give, we give away the really big trophy. We're going to have a celebration of our students' accomplishments with the blessing. We'll have a celebration of all the things that have been good about what has been done with our organization, people around us. 
But we want people to know you can celebrate life. You can have joy. And at the same time, couple that with learning. So that's what November is going to be. So there's going to be some additional add-ons to that? Yes. Okay, so let's say, um, is it for only people who have attended a Ken Wah Food no, Workshop? No, it can be anyone. Wow, so somebody who hasn't attended can yeah. come and still get benefit. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. That's the celebration. Wow. I really don't have anything else. If, if, if one of you would like to add anything else in closing. It's still hurt. <laughs> Especially my right one. <laughs> y'all ready for London? Yes. Y'all yeah. ready for Houston? Yes. And y'all ready for Charlotte? Absolutely. Yep. And then you ready for him to buy you some nice presents for Christmas? You got that right. And you ever heard to get you some nice presents for Christmas? I like shoes too. <laughs> <laughs> comfortable shoes. Yeah, comfortable shoes. Sassettis, Testonis, Muslims, all of them. <laughs> Every day, this sense of humor. Every day, absolutely. We wouldn't survive without our sense of humor. Mission of love. Someone said that um, they feel that you are all on a mission of love. What to what number would you scale that as being accurate on a scale from zero? I would think that's a ten. Mm. Mm. Because God is love, and we're His messengers, and our our message is to bring about information to help empower and evolve people. So our message is of love. And that's why we're here. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate thank you, it. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Peace. Peace.